Today I sit down with Bill Sykes. Bill Sykes is the, the pastor of the church I grew up in in Montana. He's been there uh, for 10 years. Over the past 10 years, he and I have become friends. I've learned to appreciate him very much and what he's doing in Montana. And I think you're going to in turn uh, appreciate the conversation that, that he and I had uh, while I was in Montana. Stay tuned for that. You are listening to the Renewal Podcast, a weekly podcast that features interviews and discussions and, and teaching on various biblical and theological subjects. My name is Colt Robinson, and I'm the lead pastor at Bethel Church in rural South Dakota. And we do this because we believe that our minds are to be shaped and, and renewed by the life-giving and transforming Word of God through the power of the Holy Spirit. So we pray for the next few minutes that as you listen, that you'll just see Jesus more clearly. Well, uh, welcome to Renewal Cast, Renewal Podcast. I'm sitting here with uh, a friend of mine, uh, the pastor of uh, the the church I grew up in, um, First Baptist Church in, in Forsyth, Montana. I'm on vacation, and I thought it would just be a, an interesting thing for me to to just sit down with uh, Pastor Bill Sykes. So I just want to just want to welcome you to the to the program and. Uh, and the first thing I, I want to do is just uh, just have you introduce yourself a little bit. Well, thanks, Colt. This is exciting, uh, nerve wracking at the same time. First time I've ever done this, like I told you last night. So, uh, but uh, it is exciting to be here and, and 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 with your guys back at your church, and and it, 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 somehow I could have maybe a little bit of a influence or encouragement, and I, I hope that's what will happen anyway. But um, I've been here ten years. I'm from Tennessee. Uh, originally East Tennessee. When I was in college, I, I went to a school near near Nashville. And uh, while I was there, I God got a hold of me. I was saved when I was younger. Um, kind of got my eyes off Christ, and and so uh, throughout most of my college life. But uh, my junior year in college, um, God took me to the whipping shed, if you want to put it that way, and 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 uh, woke me up, uh, reminded me of my roots, and reminded me of of him and, and, and how miserable life really is outside of fellowship with Christ. So that's another story in of itself. But through that whole process, um, uh, I began to wonder what was I going to do with, um, with my, my life. I wasn't happy with my major, you know, in college. And, and so, um, just really confused. But during that time I was, I was really doing a lot of praying and, uh, and, and living with my grandparents at the time. And, and, uh, it's just one of those those moments when you're in prayer with God and you you know His Spirit is 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 laying something heavy on your heart and the only thing that would come across my mind was, you know, you, you're going to go preach. You want to? I want you to preach. I want you to go to seminary and preach. And and um, I'm like, no, no, I can't speak in class. You, you, let alone you think you want me to stand up in, in in front of a group of people and 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 speak. I can't do that. Um, and, and this kind of was a verbal argument, if you want to put it that way, between me and the Lord. I mean, I, I don't mean I was hearing voices or anything like that, but his, <laughs> I knew that I knew what was going on. And, and, and finally, I just said, um, I just said, Lord, if that's what you want, I'll do it. I'm done. I give up. I, at that moment, my entire world changed. I mean, my desires changed everything. I was ready to get out of college and go straight to seminary in Texas. And, uh, so, uh, through, a, uh, and realized in that is we surrender to the desire of God, the desire of God becomes our desire. It's, it's an amazing thing. It took a while. I, I, I hung out in, in Nashville and worked and met my wife during that period of time. And, and we ended up going to seminary in Texas and, um, uh, went, went to Southwestern Baptist Theological Seminary there for three and a half years, ended up going back to Tennessee, uh, in, um, uh, the home County in which I grew up. And spent uh, eleven years at a church there, and uh, and then some circumstances began to unfold that would would bring us to to Montana. That's just a little bit about you know. Yeah, so I guess I guess kind of got to get into that a little bit. You know, we we're a you know your Southern Baptist church here in, in Montana, uh, but my experience in in this church is that uh, people from the South when they come up. They don't. They don't stay very long. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, I believe you're the you're the pastor that's been here the longest since the church's 
Yeah, it'll be ten, exactly. 10 years and it'll be years. 10 years in August. Um, uh, you know, I, uh, first of all, my wife, let me back up with that. That, that was an interesting thing because, you know, we heard the same thing from people up here that, oh man, they don't stay long from the South because the, the winters can be brutal and, and that kind of thing. And there's a lot of isolation, particularly in this part of the state, in the Eastern part. Um, there's a 55,000 people, you know, East of Billings, if you don't count Billings, mm-hmm. East of there. And, and so the whole state. So if you're if you've got a a city mindset and you come to a rural church, you're probably going to struggle. But uh, uh, my own desire for this area is very interesting because when I was in college, I tried to get to the to the northwest. Land and places like that have always kind of been a draw to me, and um, I, I tried to get out here. I couldn't work at Yellowstone for reasons I couldn't stay long enough. I. I got to seminary and we had a thing called Spring Evangelism Practicum, which they would uh, hook up um, uh, seminary students during spring break with small churches across the country mm-hmm. to do mini revivals or a week long revival. And uh, the, the the professor asked us to put down our top three regions in which we would like to go uh, and preach revival. In my my uh, my 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 number one area to want to come to was the Northwest. It was this area. Uh, my second. Uh, uh, one was in the north, the northeast. I'd never been up into that area, mm. and then my last choice was in the Midwest. Mm. Did not want to go in the South. I mean, I grew up there. It's the last place I wanted to go. So, um, and sure enough, when I get back my our, our, our assignments, I end up in the Midwest. My very last choice. <laughs> so we go to Michigan, and uh, so I was kind of bummed. You know, I really yeah. wanted to come to here, but I chalk it up Lord's leadership, guidance, direction, sovereignty, whatever. And I had a good time in Michigan, but yeah, you know, great church. Loved the time I was there for that week. So I tried to come out in this area at various times just to see it. So we're in Tennessee, and I don't, I got eight years, nine years, I guess I've been there nine years. And our, our director of missions calls me up and he says, um, Hey, the Tennessee Baptist and Montana Baptist uh, have formed a partnership. And, um, I'd like to know if you'd like to go out and see what this partnership's going to entail. And I'll pay your, your ticket, <laughs> your, your plane ticket. I said, Hey, free ticket, see Montana. I'm, all, I'm, I'm there. And that's really, it sounds terrible, but really the only thing I was really interested in, I wasn't interested in much in the partnership. You know, I, I was interested in seeing Montana. Yeah. This is the West. <laughs> And, uh, but when we got here and met with the, the ministers and some of the leadership in the state and Billings, I, I just immediately fell in love, not just with the state, but with, with, uh, within my own heart, a desire for ministry in this area began to, 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 to take place. And, uh, we, um, they, they divided us up into different groups and we, uh, the, the group I ended up with, um, uh, we ended up coming to this church and met the pastor of this church who then took us around to some other churches. And I I, uh, I remember after my visit in Montana and I got back home, I remember telling God um, it, it, uh, one time, I just, one time I said, Lord, I said, if you ever want us in Montana, I'm willing to go, but would you take us to that church, First Baptist Church, Forsyth? Mm. Only time I ever said that. Mm. And, um, couple of years, well, not, not a couple, about a year later, a friend of mine in Tennessee uh, that I had gone to high school with uh, called me up. He said, uh, I heard you've been in Montana. I said, yeah. Hmm. And I hadn't talked to this guy in 15, 20 years. Yeah. He, I said, I had, yeah, I was there. He was telling me everything about it that you know. Well, it's not very much, but I'll tell yeah. you. Yeah. And I said, Doug, why? And he said, well, he goes, God's laid on my heart that my family and I are, are going to be going to Montana. We, that's where our heart just is yearning to go minister in Montana. We don't know, we, we, we didn't know when, but we, we knew that's where he wanted us to go. And when they, he had heard from a lady that was uh, talking about some mission situations and brought my name up, he knew that God was preparing them to bring them to Montana. So long story short, um, he ended up coming out here. He fell in love with this church, First Baptist Church, uh, began working in, in, in this town in Forsyth. And about a year after they had been here, um, I got a phone call uh, that wanted to know if I would consider interviewing with the church because um, the pastor was, was leaving to go down to Texas. So uh, 
I knew then at that moment, this is where we were going to be. Yeah. Of course, I went to my wife and I said, I said, you know, hey, honey, is, would, would you follow me anywhere? And she's like, well, yeah. I said, would you follow me to Africa? And she got really excited because she surrendered a mission to, to Africa when she was in, in college. Yeah. And uh, um, I said, well, it's kind of like Africa. <laughs> and she's like, oh, no, you want me to go to Montana, don't you? <laughs> and so I'm like, yeah. yeah, yeah. So uh, it took about a week, week and a half. And she came back and she said, let's go. Yeah. Man, I can't wait. Let's go. She, she had one experience in Montana prior to this. And it wasn't a very good one. Mm. But she's, let's go. Mm. And so um, it's been a it's been a joy. You know, we, we love this, this yeah. part of the country and the ministry here. And, yeah, it's got kind of interesting. Listen to you. I had a very similar experience and when I was in uh seminary, I just went to the the Christian high school in in uh in Huron for for the interview, for the process. Really had no intention of, of going there. I walked in the door, um, and I knew that's where God wanted me. Uh not long after I was there teaching, I went out to Bethel Church just supply preaching um one Sunday morning and and remember on the drive home, I said, God, if you ever want me to be a pastor, uh, want it to be a church just like that. And uh, 10 years later, uh, that's where God had me to. So, I, how God I mean, calls us yeah. and moves his people to where he wants them to be is amazing. You, know, you, you, you look at Scripture and you realize there is no cut and dry, specific uh, way that, I mean, he spe- we know this, he speaks by his spirit through his word. Okay, and 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 he confirms through his word, and and, and we we under we know that. I mean, it's not just, but but it's amazing how God does confirm, and and, and he just lets you know um, in in uncanny, crazy ways. Yeah, yeah. We should know that uh, you know, Pastor Bill. I don't. I didn't. I've just gotten to know him uh, over the the last ten years. I haven't really been back that much, and. But we've we've got together uh, here and there, and went to a conference oh, yeah. uh, together last. Had last to do year. another one in September. So. Yeah, um, so we've gotten to know each other there, and so I'm I'm learning a lot here. But we've had some some great conversations, and and I I'm absolutely thrilled uh, that um, that Pastor Bill is here, and and just seeing what's going on in the in the life of the the church here. Uh, this uh, this church looks. Uh, completely different uh, than when I when I when I was here um, there's there's additions on the church there's there's a lot more people um, can you just talk about that maybe just uh, you know what what is some changes that has taken place well um, since, um, since you got here you know when 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 I got here I I, I want to go back I think when I got here I told you there was a couple the couple that had come out before yeah. us and they were here and they they were I think they had been instrumental in in some things in our, in this church, just some uh, uh, their personality, their their willingness to jump in and minister in a, in a multitude of different ways. That was kind of refreshing to some of the membership. I think in the congregation when I got here, I, I realized there was a few families that were very solid. I had some really solid families and leadership already here in, in establishment, which was was really good. Now, you, you always, I think a pastor going to a new church, he comes in a bit apprehensive and a little bit nervous, especially if he's come out of a congregation where he's been, he's had some real difficulties with some folks and power struggles and things like that. And of course, I, it would be wrong of me to say I came in wondering, you know, question trying to find who's going to be, who's going to be that power person. And uh, it was was just anticipating the worst, to be honest with you, mm-hmm. something to rise up. But it never really happened. I mean, we had some issues earlier on uh, where we needed to deal with this, that, or the other. And I certainly made, I think, a couple of you know hasty decisions without looking into some 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 uh, inquiring as to some things that how things work and that kind of stuff. Yeah. But, but it was good. We worked it out. I think the right way, and it had some good discussion and conversation. And but we had some good leadership established already here. And and that to me was was important. Also, uh, one of the things that I uh, about this church is there there was a a real sense of fellowship. I had never been in a church that when you um, at the beginning folks just kind of mingled around mm-hmm. and, and, and and talked with one another and conversed with one another as a part of. Hey, do this before we really get into the 
to the focus of the mm-hmm. of the, uh, the, the the service, and and that just to me was really refreshing. I, I, I and so that, that's one of the things about this church that's unique from anything I've ever experienced. Um, and uh, but I, I, I always go back to there was some really sound, solid leadership. We didn't have a the the age meeting was not it's probably. 40s, 50s, somewhere in there. But uh, over time, we had some young couples and folks come in to move into town and and um, were able to reach some younger couples and families. And then eventually babies began to be born. And, you know. Yeah. 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 Well, it's, yeah, it's it's just, it's just good to see. I mean, last night, you know, after, after church last night, just, people just stayed yeah uh, they'll hang around for an hour hour and a half sometimes yeah that's that's unique Mm -hmm. i would say from my perspective i you know i thought i thought we hung around sometimes after church but um but we only have church in the morning yeah (laughs) you know we got places to go in the morning think about where we are i mean we're in a we're in an isolated area for the most part i mean for size good side town but we've got we've got people that come from you know 25 30 miles away and so if they're going to drive that far you know, typically they'd like to converse and get to know what's you know happening and going on and, and, and talk. And I think that's part of being where we are. Yeah. Um, in the South, you know, I, I went home this last summer and, and nothing against my home church. I love it. I mean, they, they helped establish me and, and big church in, in, in the South. And, and uh, um, but we, we went back for vacation and uh, after the worship service was over, there's five, 600 people in the worship service. And when it was done, uh, within 10 minutes, the sanctuary was empty and there was only three or four people hanging around that knew me when I was younger that wanted to say hello and my brother and others. And we conversed. <laughs> we, after 10 minutes there, we walked up into the foyer. It was completely empty. We walked out of the parking lot. This is 20 minutes after the whole thing. It was empty. Yeah. And, and, and I thought to myself, wow, I really appreciate our church. They, they will hang around here yeah. and talk and converse and laugh and make plans to do this, that, and the other. And, and, and that's the thing too. I, I've noticed in this congregation, people have developed relationships and they do things together. Yeah. It's nothing, it's not uncommon to see a lot of our, our folks sitting together at a basketball game or a football game uh, in, in the community of doing this, that, and the other in the community together. We've been here about three years and, and someone mentioned to another, uh, another family in our church says, why are y'all all sitting together? In the basketball game, are y'all snooty or something? You know, they're like, "Well, we're just friends." You know, yeah. we 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 like being together. Yeah, and and that that just a reflection of being a church family. You yeah, know, not just a body, yeah. but a family. Yeah, yeah. It was it was it was fun for me uh, yesterday to to be here, and uh, I just I mean, it's been I don't know how when's the last time we you know four or five years maybe since. Uh, we were here on a Sunday morning and Sunday evening. Uh, and I mean, I remember I went up and, and, uh, and saw Tom Kirkledy mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, I just, he gave me a big hug and I mean, it was just that whole family atmosphere. I mean, I had tears in my eyes when I'm hugging people at, at church because, uh, it's just, yeah, this is, this is the family. Even, even when you hadn't been here for, for years, there's there's something about just growing up in a small church that mm-hmm. you know where the the people care and, and love it, love each other and uh, boy, it was yeah, it was a special thing. Yesterday was Father's Day. I'm not sure when this will be released, but just so yesterday was Father's Day, you preached on the devil. <laughs> uh, I I just kind of curious. Uh, and and I and, why and kind of the subject well, on the kind of, kind of the disclosure <laughs> the, the disclosure there is yeah. is on Mother's Day we just stayed in our series in in yeah. Romans as well and yeah uh, you know we we did we did some things to to recognize mothers yeah. and you did that too you you recognize yeah. fathers and um, you know we we had some of the kids in our in our church involved in the service and did a kind of a Mother's mm-hmm. Day poem and we thought mothers would just really like that. Mm-hmm you know, part of the, the service. But as far as the, the sermon, we just, we just went on in, in Romans. Mm-hmm. And, uh, so did you just kind of go on in your series or did you just pick, pick Yeah. You devil? know, to be honest with you, I'll be really honest with you. I absolutely forgot that it was father's day until the end of the week. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm thinking to myself, 
uh, I came down, comes down to Friday, and I was so ex- into the text and working on it all week long and, and knowing where we were going. We've been preaching through Ephesians, and Ephesians is my favorite epistle of Paul, and I've never preached through it. And I, I so, you know, a year and a half ago or whatever it was, Two years ago, we started going through it, and I, 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 we finally get to chapter six, and uh, had spent some time with on the family, you know, in, in chapter five, moving into the right. workers and all that kind of stuff. So I was really excited about getting into uh, this 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 last section, <laughs> and, and, and I really forgot that it was Father's Day until Friday. I, it crossed my mind. Well, golly, bum, should I break out an old Father's Day sermon since it's Father's Day? But you know, I. Minute, over the years, I used to feel like I had to do a, a message that whatever holiday was going on, and I had to do that, and, and not so much anymore. I, I, I would I would way rather recognize this is a special day, but you know, let let's just here we are in the Word, especially if you've been going through a series and you've got people that are there um, that that have been looking forward to whatever you know that next part's going to be, so. I just want. I just. Man, we're going to stay right where we are. It, it, it turned out I had to mention fathers within the well, yeah. within the message. With the message, who's your daddy? You know, the devil right. or who's your, <laughs> or or or, yeah. or God. Yeah. So uh, I guess it applied a little bit, actually. Right. Yeah, it, it's amazing how how those things work out. You know, when you when you let Scripture dictate. Yeah. I read uh, an article one time. And he was talking about how, uh, why on, on holidays. And I think he was even making the case, you know, through, through Advent and in some of those that, that maybe it's just best to, to stick with the, the text that you're going through because you get so many people that, that just come into church for those Mother's Day occasions or those Easter occasions. And, you know, those, those are the things that they, they, they hear the same thing. You know, you come on, you visit your dad on Father's Day, you always hear a Father's Day sermon. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. Then you, you know, when you come and they're in the middle of Ephesians and they're, and they're preaching through Ephesians, you're going to, you're going to hear something different. It's going to cultivate interest yeah. and, and get them in the word. And, um, I don't know. I don't, I, there's nothing wrong with preaching a father's day yeah. sermon or, uh, or anything like that. No, I think that's a, that's an excellent point though. That's an excellent point. Uh, maybe I've thought that way and never voiced it in that way, but I guess kind of how I feel, you know, yeah. hearing that, um, well, and I, I guess I, I, I just, if, if we come to the, the text on, on Sunday morning and, and, and say, and this is my, my firm belief is that if something's going to happen this morning in the hearts of people, it's going to be because the Holy Spirit is working because God is, he has surrounded the whole process. He's surrounded the, the study. He's, he's done all of this. Um, it's not going to be because of, of me, right? right. I'm, I'm inadequate. Um, right. And <clears throat> So when it comes to, to choosing the text, you know, I think what Andy Stanley says is absolutely arrogant, you know, that, that he knows best what his congregation needs. Um, I would say, no, God knows best. You know, God is, God is absolutely sovereign. He's more, he's more entwined in the lives of people than the pastor could ever be. So uh, that's it. Name, and th- name, and that's the beauty <laughs> of expositional too. preaching, you know, right. expository preaching, going through the text keeps me from being God or trying to play God. You know, I, the number of times that you, you hear something like, well, that, 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 that passage really spoke to me and this, that, and the other, but if it had not been in that text, you know, I, you would just go right through it and, and you let the Holy Spirit take his word. Cause you, when people, no matter how many people we have in the congregation, they're not coming with the same thing. They're all coming with something different. They're being dealt with in something different. And it's amazing how one word, one, one part of a verse in a text that you're, you're going through can gra- gra- grab a person's heart and mind. And they don't, they hear, they don't hear anything else the rest of the sermon, but they hear that and that, and the Holy Spirit takes that and, and, and works in their heart and their mind in regards to that. But it just, it keeps me from trying to pick and choose. You know, I've heard people say, well, you were speaking right to me today. And as though I had picked them out all week long and decided I was going to preach to them at the end of the week. And I haven't. Mm-hmm. And I just was going through the text or use the same thing. You're just going through the text and God used that text to 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 get a hold of them and, and, and speak to them. Uh, but I... it. No one can come to me and you and we do this and say, you, you, you were trying to uh, point me out, weren't you? You were trying to, no. This is, you knew from last week this is where we were going to be this week. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. So how do you decide what, uh, you know, what book, you know, like, or do, do you do, 
Uh, maybe I'll ask this first. Uh, do you ever do series of sermons that are not books, or do you always preach through a book? No, I, I do series. Uh, we just like on Sunday nights. A lot of Sunday evenings will be a series of a, a, a topic or a subject matter. It, it's kind of I've got on my computer when I when I'm in my just reading my Bible in, in my quiet time, or you want to call it that. Um, I'll come across a verse or something that catches my attention. Or a subject matter that catches my attention, and I'll go, hmm. That that's I, I've noticed this t- phrase used several other times in in scripture, mm-hmm. and I'll go look up several of those verses, and then I'll say, you know, that would be a really good series to look at. Like one one of them, the one we just finished on Sunday nights, I, I entitled "Saints of Standing," and, and and a verse had grabbed my attention. I don't remember which one it is now. It talked about standing. It wasn't the one in Ephesians six, though. I did look at that one later. You know whatever you do stand but um and then i got to looking at steadfastness and stand firm and and i got to thinking about uh individuals saints in the scriptures who stood and i got to thinking oh i started looking up all these verses where they, they it says they stood or they were standing and i thought okay i want to go through and look at a bunch of these individuals in the circumstances and the situations in which they were they are said to have been standing and so you know the first one we looked at was moses I mean, here in Exodus, he comes before the Lord and, and, and the Lord says, take your sandals off your feet for the ground on which you stand is holy ground. And so we, we just spent that first night looking at the fact that here he was, he stood in the presence of God. What kind of ground was this that he was standing on? It was holy ground. What made the ground holy? God made it holy. And, and so we just, you know, looked at that text and then I, I kind of picked it apart like you would expositorily, right. but within the context of that. So then the next week we went and looked at another individual, a saint who was, Stood. We looked at David, who was standing over Goliath in victory. You know, but went back and said, "But David standing in victory over Goliath here began because he was standing in in faith way earlier than that." Mm -hmm. And so, those kinds of things will grab my attention, and I'll do series on that kind of stuff. Um, Same one where you know it says, and, "And they were at the feet of Jesus." And there's three or four passages, I think two or three at least, where it talks about, "And they were at the feet of Jesus." I'm like. Let's go look at that. You know, what is it at the feet of Jesus? You know, so I, I kind of like doing series is that way. But my my heart and passion though really is expository going through a book, and so like with Ephesians, I picked it because it had been I'd never preached through it. It's my favorite book, and, and it's one of those most important, crucial letters of Paul. I think uh, for for believers because you know that whole is so doctrinal. It's so so. It, it, the first half, and then he moves all into the practical, and he deals with everything we need to deal with. He's, he's talking about who we are in Christ, our identity, our chosenness, our election, all those various things, um, our adoption, um, just again like that that, that our, our identity, and and then he lays the foundation for believers to understand who they are, and then out of who they are, why we do what we do, or are able to do what we do in Christ. And, uh, and, I, and for a long time, I think, and I'd been really wanting to just get to deal with families, you know, as well. I'm sure. and, and, and address the whole issue of marriage because everywhere you look, it's just a mess. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. a mess. And, and, and Christians are struggling. Only Ephesians does that is better than, than any of the others or more precisely. Yeah. 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 yeah I think that that's. That's kind of how we do it. We, we're a little different context because we just have, you know, the Sunday morning service, and then we have we have Wednesday night as well. Um, but on Sunday mornings, primarily we go through a book. Um, we've been in we're in Romans eight. We've been there for two years, I think, mm-hmm. um, so far. And you know, we take we take breaks. Like right now, we're planning. We're in Romans eight. Yeah. You know, five or six messages probably left in, in Romans eight. And then, um, I'll take a break. And, and right now the, the series is going to be kind of a Christianity one one. kind of go back to the basics. Jesus is God. Uh, you know, what are we thinking about the Trinity and, and some of those basic doctrines? I'm, I'm thinking about changing it though. I've been tempted, uh, to, to just start talking about the atonement. Mm-hmm. Uh, we our our denomination is, is struggling a little bit, mm-hmm. um, in the area of, of the atonement and, mm-hmm. and, and we can have this conversation off, off the, <laughs> off the deal. But <laughs> I'm getting a but, book here. You need to. Yeah. I bought this one last year at a conference. Oh yeah. 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 Uh, you have that one? 
I don't know if I do or not, but I need to get it. Yeah. Um, because uh, one of the things that that is that the seminary is uh, Fresno Pacific Seminary, a uh, biblical seminary in Fresno, California. Uh, they've kind of struggled with with this over over the years. Uh, they had a guy that one of their professors came out and and published a, a book and kind of didn't didn't care for substitutionary atonement, penal substitutionary mm-hmm. atonement, and and kind of made that an, an, another option. I mean, to be kind. Uh, lately, they've had some adjunct professors there that have had a really popular program. You've heard of the, some of the names Brian Zand and. Mm-hmm. And Greg Boyd, uh, and they, they, uh, they just really hammered penal substitutionary mm-hmm. atonement. And so, one of the things they're they're planning on doing now is is adding the word substitutionary into our in our confession of faith, yeah. uh, which makes it a a good. I mean, that's a good change. It's a yeah. very good change. In our in our magazine that came out this last week, and I meant to bring it over here. I'll bring. I'll let you read it. Uh, but there's an article on the atonement. Basically, every theory of the atonement he makes substitutionary in some mm-hmm. form. Uh, so, really, the, the adding that word in there is not going to yeah. mean anything. Uh, so, it's it's frustrating. So, I'm, I'm very tempted to just do a, a series of messages on the atonement. Hey, you know, we have to do that. As pastors, there's times where our, our congregation is is, is going to face a, something or, or they're going to have questions about it. And, and you know, I realize that. You know, I don't know times in my life I've thought, okay, I know this is going to come up. It needs to be addressed. You can't just ignore it. And uh, those are the exception. That's not the norm. I, if you make if you make what's going on in the world all the time your your subject matter and what you're going to preach, well, okay, this politics thing there, this thing over here, this thing over there. It's, there's there, there's not really a lot of cohesiveness. There's there's not a lot of. Uh, um, I, I I don't know. I, I, again, I think it goes back to you know, well, I'm I'm going to play God there and try to figure out what. Yeah, is this is this my soapbox? Yeah, you know, is this kind of where I'm at? And and I think, I think at some point in the next couple years, um, we're going to have to do. We're going to have to think through this. You know, is now the right time? But I think you I think you're right. You know, there. Uh, they, they, when you say, I mean, the preachers, you, you got to do this. You, you, I mean, these, these, this is your flock, and, and you got to guard them, you know, from from error creeping in. And um, you, you, you know, know I need to do that. I'll give you an example. We I, I probably, I don't, I don't know when, but there's a good possibility I'll, I'll probably deal with um, the new apostolic reformation in movement. You know, that's, I think they've got a new name now, Inc. or something like that. But I don't know if you're familiar with it or not. But it started in the, I think, uh, Bethel. I think that's the name of the church in California. Okay, uh, it, it, and uh, yeah, uh, it, you know, with a lot uh, of music, comes a lot of music, and and you, a youth movement, yeah. and and it's it's like um, charismaticness on steroids, beyond yeah. beyond. It's just it's yeah. it, and I don't know if you've ever seen any of some of the chaos. They do the, they do the grave soaking or it, all kinds you of know, weird crazy yeah. stuff, and 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 so, but the music's really a big deal in it. And of course you got a lot of contemporary Christian artists that are associated with this this you know Jesus culture is the big the big one and, and, and that kind of thing. So um you know it, it, when you catch your youth and you bring them in and they're brought into this 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 thing, uh you know, that's something that I'll probably feel like that I, I need to to help prepare our youth and our younger folks for this. You know, it it, it it's stuff's creeping in and into the churches and yeah. and I wanna be able to prepare people for what what they can expect at least give them a a solid foundation theologically to recognize what is error and not error i mean we're talking about the the devil's very subtle and able to take in and 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 bring the uh sounds like it's truth but it's not truth yeah and and if there are are kids and our people aren't theologically grounded and and their foundations there then they're gonna they're gonna fall we don't want that it's our role to keep them yeah i um there's there's been some good music I think that comes out at you know Bethel and you know we sing song on on Sunday and we sing this in our church that it is well song yeah. you know and the story behind that's a, a great story but yeah. the the guy that wrote it was a heretic yeah um, and uh, that doesn't mean the song is not good yeah you know and I think sometimes we gotta we gotta judge you know some of those things but the controversy you know the the song reckless love that has been mm-hmm. so popular on Chris, Christian charts you know. Um, is God's love reckless has been one of the big questions on the mm-hmm. internet. Um, you know, the, and it comes out of that, that movement, Yeah, you know, and, 
you know, do we sing that? Do we not? Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's those, those are difficult. Yeah. Difficult yeah. Issues. Well, well I, I'm excited about the conference we're going to, because I'm really looking forward to yeah. the getting into the Psalms and, uh, that's, right. that's going to be, yeah. that's going to be enjoyable. Yeah. It's the, the Getty, mm-hmm. uh, worship conference sing. Um, I think they'll put that in the, in the show notes. Yeah. Room, so people can, can go check that out before we, I want to ask you about the, the, your kind of, you're going through the armor of God and, mm-hmm. and, in that, but you made reference on I don't remember, Sunday morning, Sunday night. Must have been must have been last night. Mm-hmm. You talked about um, Abba Father mm-hmm. and uh, just you know talking about God as as Father. Talk about that just a, a little bit. You know, just kind of maybe even give a little bit of a rundown of what your message was last night. How you how you approached. Uh, that I that really was uh, good. I thought. Oh, from Galatians, you know, yeah, in the Galatians three, in the beginning yeah. of Galatians four. Well, that was my that was my <laughs> deal to recognize Father's Day. <laughs> yeah. But uh, you know, it, <sighs> I guess I never really thought about it there. You know, the, yeah. in that text, the the issue with with fathers, but it was I mean, it was all over the place. Yeah, know? I mean, when he talks about son, you, you five times there in those verses, he he mentions their son or sons, and I, I, when, we, when I'm not an expert by any stretch of the means, but when it comes to to our relationship to God, and and, and we know He's our heavenly Father. Jesus refers to Him as His Father. Over and over and over again. Of course, that's you know that's what they you you can't say that you can't say that. Yeah, how dare you? You're equating yourself with God. You know <laughs> when they would say Jesus, they knew what Jesus meant by referring to his father as his father. He was the son of. So, uh, um, but how absolutely beautiful is it? The fact that the Christian, uh, the follower of Christ, is adopted into a family that is eternal and it is it is. It is ordained. It is. It is um, um, to be able to call God Father. I mean, I was just reading this morning in, in First First John three one. This is just me and my own time, quiet yeah. time, and I. And and he gets into the whole issue of sin, and he says, "Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sins lawlessness." And and you know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him there is no sin. Whoever abides in him does not sin. Whoever sins has neither seen him nor known him. Little children. You know, little little children, uh, let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous, just as he is righteous. He who sins is of the, the devil. And for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whoever has been born of God does not sin, for his seed remains in him, and he cannot sin because he's been born of of God, and, and we use the "born of God." You're you're you're, the, the, you're right. be born again. Um, the, a birth means parentage, right? right. Yeah. <laughs> there, where there's a birth, there's parents, yeah. and and God birthed us into into a relationship with Himself. He brought us forth. He He called us. He convicted us. He He He, he moved us. He He did everything necessary for us to believe to repent. And and then brought us. He brought us into this family, and he says, "I'm your father." He's Pater father, and he's Abba father. He's he he's he's he. Paul says that in Romans. You know, again, we have in Galatians, Abba father. And uh, I know there's probably been a lot made of that over the years, and it, and it, I think it is important yeah. to realize that there's a closeness with God in Abba that's not um, so as opposed to a distance. The danger in that we can over we overemphasize it to the extent that we somehow think that God is just our our the Father is just our, our best buddy friend that's that's um he, he's 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 a, hey happy go lucky do whatever you want to do type of a a father and we forget that he is holy and he is righteous and he is pure and he is he has standards and he will hold his children to those standards and that's why he'll discipline us which is not pleasant in the moment, but is meant for our righteousness and, and those sorts of things. Yeah. And I thought that's, I thought that's what you brought out so well last night is this, this idea that, you know, this, this closeness, this intimacy that we have in the Abba father, but yet, you know, that, that, that doesn't take away from God's holiness. And, and, and this, this hit me. I've always, I've always, that 
that word Abba Father has always frustrated me because I think when and, and you sometimes you hear people you know just you know Daddy you know and they start praying and they just it's it's just this almost irre not relevant or reverent mm-hmm. um, and and you know so I want to preserve that on one side and you know and I and I was I was preaching through Romans and Romans eight and and got to that and just talking about this this idea of of sonship and and what it what it means to be a son and how you know in Christ there's there's just this this intimacy that what Christ has done for us has put you on this this plane where God is is always he's he's pleased with us in Christ because Christ is atoned for our sin Absolutely. and there's nothing that you can ever do to to destroy that relationship because Christ has already already done it and and yes, that creates intimacy because there's absolutely no barrier between you and God. No. And, and I think that's, you know, that, that idea on this side that, that frustrated me, God is, God is holy. You can't talk to God like that. But I think I was missing the, I think I was missing the gospel. <laughs> you know, the gospel says there is absolutely no barrier between, between you and, and God. Um, yeah, yeah, he can, he yeah. has he has taken care of this, you know. So on one side, I mean, I'm I'm a firm advocate that that Jesus's death on the cross actually accomplished salvation for those who would place Kurt their faith and trust in him. Yeah. You know, and I mean, he it, it didn't make salvation a potential thing, you know, for for everyone. I mean, he guaranteed actually it for guaranteed it. accomplished that. So those sins that, that we commit, he died for those specific sins. But yet I wasn't applying it, you know, in, in my, in my prayer life, you know, that, that, you know, because I think sometimes we feel guilty about what's going on in our lives or whatever, and it hinders our, in our prayer life, but it, but it shouldn't because there's this, this intimacy and this intimacy doesn't come from feelings. It doesn't come from how we feel in the moment. It comes from our position as sons in Christ and what he's done for us. Yeah. And, and I, thought, I thought you brought that out very well. well I, you know, one of the things I'm thinking about right here on that is I, I, I found in my life where Abba comes across, I think, more more profoundly than than Pater Father, is is what what's happening in my life? Am I grieving, man? Am I hurting? There, there seems to be Abba comes across. It seems like way quicker where when my world's falling apart. Yeah. You know, when when you're you're you find out that your daughter's had a you know, stroke at two years old. And, 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 you know, you realize in your thinking, Father Pater, it seems mm-hmm. distant, but Abba's close. And boy, Lord, I need you close. Mm-hmm. You know, there's reasons why we have, and, and I think it's the Psalms, he talks about, you know, I, I would only draw you in like a mother hen would with her wings or, you know, however it is it's, it's phrased. I can't remember at the moment. I think you know which passage. I mean, there's a close intimacy there that God wants to and is able to, to, to bring about. And when we're hurting, I think that's where we're experiencing him probably is, is Abba more than any other uh, time. Is, is, and um, Jesus, when you look at, let's move it over into the, into the life of Christ. I mean, look at the intimacy that he had with his disciples. Now, he was firm with him when he needed to be firm. He was straightforward. He was like, hey, get behind me, Satan. <laughs> you do not have in mind the things of God and the things of men. And he, yeah. he was frank with them. He was, he was straightforward with them. He didn't hold anything back from them. But they loved being with him. Yeah. They couldn't imagine being with anybody else. They, 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 they enjoyed his presence. They didn't like it when he wasn't there. They came to him early in the morning to teach us to pray. You know, they didn't interrupt him in the middle of his prayer time. You know, they, they wanted to be with Christ. And um, 2,000 years later, or all these years later, when we've not been with him in the physical sense and been able to, to, to see him in that regard, um, but we know that one day we shall be able to be in his presence in, in, a, in the material, physical sense and experience it that side of it, which the apostles and disciples got to experience to some extent, you know, 2,000 years ago, walking with him in the flesh. Yeah. And I, and I love Jesus's statement there that, you know, don't worry, I'm, I'm leaving, but I'm, but I'm going to leave you the, the comfort. I'm going to leave Absolutely. you the Holy Spirit and his job is to point you to me. So I'm not going to be there, but, but you're going to be pointed to, to everything about exactly. me. So, 
you know, so our life is totally wrapped up in in the person, which and takes us back the Holy the, to the word. That. I mean, that yeah. takes us back to the scriptures. So we, you know, we've got the gospels, we've got the accounts, we've got all the record of Christ, and to some extent, we're more privileged, you know, in that regard yeah. uh, than than. than so many before, especially the Old Testament saints who were looking forward as to what they could only see dimly. But uh, we, we were able to look back and we have the promises. We have them to stand on, to, to live by, to, to, to hold on to, to cling to. Um, and, and all that, it boils back to the relationship. It boils back to that fellowship. Jesus says in, I think, John 15, you know, abide in me and my word abides in you. Um, ask what you desire, you bear fruit, bear much fruit. And that abiding is that fellowship aspect of just living in relationship. So we have just a few minutes left, and, and I want to transition from that. And I think this did a good job of, of framing uh, the Sunday morning message, you know, in the, in the fact that, that we are children of God. We are, you know, he, we have this intimate relationship with us that, that nothing can, can destroy, nothing can take apart. Um, so Sunday morning, you, t- you talked about the devil, and, and I think you kind of phrase it as let's just talk about the doctrine of the the doctrine of the devil before we get into the battle which is going to be yeah. next week how to fight the doctrine the doctrine of the, <laughs> the devil, doctrine of the devil. <laughs> uh, just just kind of go through that just just a little bit and, and how how you went about laying laying that out you know as i as, as you get to look at it at the, the text and you realize okay you ask yourself and this is an enormous subject, and, 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 and the devil is a very popular subject. I mean, I, I don't know uh, amongst Christians, okay? Um, I think looking back on my life, when you get as a teenager and you start talking about the devil, boy, you get, you want to you're curious. What is he? What's he really like? What's this, that, and the other, and, and 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 all that kind of thing. And I think a lot of Christians do have a lot of questions about Satan. Um, I, at the same time, I think that so many Christians don't ever think about Satan. We we never consider him at all, which I think he's really glad and happy for it to be that way. Right. Um, uh, so the reality is, Scripture t- tells us that um, we have an enemy, and he's it. <laughs> he's it. And... And I mentioned I'm a military buff, and military 101 tac, you know, 101 is simply know know your enemy. The better you know your enemy, the more equipped you are to be able to conquer. And the Bible tells us that in Christ we're more than conquerors. In Romans 8, we're more than conquerors in Christ, Christ Jesus. The Bible tells us that we're in a war. It tells us that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, and every Christian struggles with something. I mean, we're all struggling with something. Sometimes more visual than others or whatever it might be, but we're struggling. We have strongholds. Sin has a grip on our heart and our life. The devil, uh, if you want to utilize it that way or use it that way, has a grip on our life. And a lot of Christians are living a defeated Christian life. They're just defeated. They might not even know they're defeated. They may be content and happy with what's going on. That's just it. Their contentment is defeat because, you know, their eyes are on Christ. They're not thinking about ministry with it, the, the, the body of Christ for the glory of Christ or any of those sorts of things. They're just kind of humdrum going along. Going along. And, uh, so they don't even realize they're in a war, uh, certainly not in a battle. And, and I thought, you know what? We need to know our enemy. And the Bible has a whole lot to say about Satan, a whole lot. And... um so that's that was my basis upon how in the world do we possibly get into fighting w- before we have a really good basis and understanding of who it is we're supposed to be fighting, yeah. you know, and uh, that that he is uh, he means not he means for our absolute destruction yeah. in, in every way possible. The good news for the believer is obviously Jesus says John ten no one can snatch you out of my hand, no one can snatch you out of my Father's hand. Um, so. Uh, but that doesn't mean that we don't fight. Yeah. You know, our eternal security doesn't mean we don't have a battle to, to, to fight. I, I was just struck by the, the, the you know, just the, the terms. I guess I never really thought about it the way you presented that. It's, you know, the, the adversary, the, the schemer, the liar. You know, all of, these, all of these terms that the Bible uses to describe the devil um, is just undoing what God is doing. Exactly. It's and, all opposite. You know, it's, all those are just you know, it's, it's, he's trying to just unravel it. And you see this from the very beginning in, in, in Genesis, right? I mean, God said that, you know, you, you, you know, God told you this, but, uh, you know, let's, let's, let's look at it a different way, you know, and, and he's just, just unraveling what God is telling them. You know, God didn't want you to do this because 
He's he is anti God and he's anti Christ in every conceivable yeah. fashion, you know, way. Uh, there, there's nothing beautiful about him, though he presents himself as an angel of light, but he's really darkness. Christ is light, not him. Right. Presents himself as though he's beautiful. And yes, the flesh and the world, there's a lot of things that we perceive to be, quote unquote, beautiful, but in the end, are death to us. What does the Bible say? Sin, when it's full born, brings forth death. Satan means for us to sin. Can't steal our salvation. Can't break the relationship with God. Can't still render our fellowship with God, you know, to be, if you want to call it, inoperable, inoperable. Um, or ineffective, and that's his goal. I really believe with with the believer is to render our ministries right. nil, to render our fellowship with Christ nil, and so that we have zero impact for the kingdom of God uh, anywhere. And um, for the rest of the lost world, obviously to, to 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 keep them deceived and and that kind of thing. Yeah, just kind of go back. I mean, even what you're talking about with the family, you know, even even right before that, you know, just. You know, the devil, you know, weaves his way in and just everything that God designed for the family to be this, this place where the, you know, the, the gospel has been entrusted to, to younger people and, it, and it's going to be, you know, grown and, and blossom, you know, in this family. Yeah, you know, the you devil know. infiltrates that and tries to destroy that. Yeah. And you think about Paul uh, moving what, well, the way he does, who you are in Christ, your identity, this is your adopted family, brought, brings all the way up to the to the physical family on earth, husband and wife relationship, uh, relationship with children, relationship between servants within the home, which we equate now to employers, employees, because not the exact same <laughs> is today. But you've got this. And then he moves into the whole warfare thing. And, and, and he doesn't say it exactly, but I have to think in, in Paul's mind, he, he's got a reason where he's going is because all that stuff he's just talked about is it, it, the, the enemy means to undermine. He means to undermine every single bit of that. And so he concludes Ephesians with, hey, you've got an enemy. All this stuff I've kind of talked about previously, you know, is... is, is uh, uh, this enemy would want to destroy. He doesn't say that specifically. When, when you come through the text and you realize, why is he going to end with the devil? <laughs> you know, why is he going like to end with talking this conversation. on? Yeah. You know, <laughs> why does he want to end with the, the devil? And I, and, 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 and he, I think he's, he's ending to some extent because all of the previous stuff he talks about is it, it's crucial that we believers be in the fight. For our children and our wives and our husbands and our workers and our employees and our employers and our our family, our church family, all of that, it, we are in America in particular. The Christian church is 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 way too relaxed, and we you know we've had it good for so long materially. Yeah, you know struggles. You know, when you look at the Bible, you realize the Bible talks about suffering in ninety percent of the time, if not more than that. It's not referring to the aches and pains of just a life. It's not talking about just, you know, getting sick with a, an illness and a disease. It's talking about suffering directly because of the fact that you're a believer. Yeah. And that you're a Christian. Well, <clears throat> I just want to, I just want to thank you for taking time out of your schedule to, oh, you're welcome. to visit with me it's today. And yeah, I, I mean, I, I love, I love doing this and, uh, <clears throat> I just want to invite you to South Dakota and, oh, uh, love to come and, uh, come and, come and preach at, at our church sometime. And we'll be, We'll be talking about that. I'm sure. I think that would be oh, that would yeah. be a great thing. Yeah, so, we do, we'll do this again. In, yeah, that would be that'd be, be awesome. Fun. Thanks, yeah. Cole. Okay, thanks, thanks a lot. If you would like to learn more about the Renewal Podcast or find past episodes, uh, check us out on the web at renewalcast.com or visit us on Facebook at facebook.com slash renewalcast. If you would like to learn more about Bethel Church, find other resources there, please visit the church website at bethelmbchurch.org or connect with us there on Facebook at facebook.com slash Bethel MB Church. Now Bethel Church exists to bring glory to God by promoting the, the joyful worship of Jesus Christ both in, in our context and to the ends of the earth.